You found Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, and today we're trying out the 4-2-10 method for cooking the brisket. So I've heard a lot of really good things about this, so I'm really excited to be trying it out. So what is the 4-2-10 method, you say? Well, it's cooking for four hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, then 285 degrees Fahrenheit for the next two hours, then you wrap it in butcher paper, add a little water, cover in foil, and then 10 hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the overview. This method cooks by time and pit temperature. It's supposed to be extremely consistent. Should be perfect for the backyard cook. I'm using a brisket that I bought on sale for $1.88 a pound. Been a long time since I've seen that low of a price, but here's the catch. It's a select grade brisket. In a grocery store, select grade's probably gonna be their bottom grade. Look, anybody can take a Wagyu brisket and cook something wonderful, but what can you do with select? The art of barbecue was developed to be able to take a lower quality piece of meat and make it delicious. So a select grade brisket should magnify any flaws in the system. Step one is to preheat your smoker to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So my Yoder Wise 1500 is preheating. As normal, open up that brisket, pat it dry, trim off any loose tags, excess fat, do a little bit of shaping. You can remove any excess silver skin. Now, I always save my brisket trim. I bag it up, label it, put it in the freezer, and then the next time I'm making smoked sausage, in it goes. Now, if you use a binder, now's the time. Worcestershire is a good choice because it contains anchovies. Anchovies are the number one umami rich food source, and it can enhance your flavor profile. Now, add your rub or rubs, pat them in, no rubbing, just press. Start with the brisket side of your choice. I usually smoke fat side down. This is the way that five-time world champion Myron Mixon does it. Good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Whichever side you choose, start with the side that you want to have as your downside. Very important to get the rub on the edges. Then flip it over and do the presentation side. When the smoker's up to temp, then my brisket's going on the top shelf with a drip pan under it to catch all the renderings. Don't forget that drip pan is part of this process. We'll be smoking for four hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so set your timer. When that first four hours are up, simply increase the temperature to 285 degrees Fahrenheit for the next two hours. Now that we're finished smoking, we've done the four and we've done the two, then we need to prepare for the next 10 hours. Lay out some butcher paper, about 40 inches or so. Take the drip pen out of your smoker and you brush on some of those drippings right onto that butcher paper. And now tightly wrap that brisket. We'll be cooking for the next 10 hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll be switching over to my electric smoker for this stage because it's extremely efficient and I don't have to burn any more wood pellets. So you can continue in your smoker, oven, or grill, your choice. The rest of the cook's covered so the smoking process is already done. The ideal way is to pan the brisket while it's sitting on top of a rack inside the pan and you add some water and then cover it tightly with foil. Now, I don't have a pan that'll fit in my cook shack and accommodate the rack, so I'm gonna have to skip the rack. The wrap brisket goes into the pan, then add about five ounces of water, maybe say up to 150 milliliters, then cover it tightly with foil. Now I'm cooking at 150 degrees for the next 10 hours and the great thing about this cooking method, you don't have to cook for exactly 10 hours. It can go a little longer. And when it's done, the brisket won't be any hotter than 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So theoretically, no rest time is required. Okay, let's see what we got. Now this is normally the part of the video where I tell you how great it all turned out. The bottom line is that this select grade brisket was not rendered sufficiently. So after I figured that it didn't measure up, I took some rendered fat, I poured it over that sliced brisket in a pan, covered it with foil, and reheated it for two and a half hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this was a night and day conversion for my brisket. It changed into the barbecue that I know and love. Am I dumping the 4-2-10 method? No way, but I'm making some adjustments on the temperature for the 10 hour stretch. I'm pretty sure a much higher temperature will work. As long as I have water in that pan, the meat temperature is not going to climb dramatically. Do you remember what happens to a paper cup when you fill it with water and you put it in a campfire? 
Well, that simple paper cup can't burn until it boils out enough water. So the fire's over 1,000 degrees, and the cup should burn at 451 degrees Fahrenheit, but the water in the cup changes everything. And this is the reason why the 4210 method could take a much higher temperature. Now, if I had used a rack, would that have drastically changed the brisket? Would less water make it better? Would a higher quality of brisket have better results? Maybe. So I went out and purchased a pan with a rack that fits into my cook shack perfectly. And I'm gonna be coming back later with an updated video when I think the time and temperatures are conquered. I'll be tweaking this method until I think I've got it dialed in. Now all you gotta do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Ruff, 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 ruff.